And we're back for another one, man. Charleston White. He's putting niggas in jail in hell. Jail or hell, them the only other two options. Yeah, yeah, them the only other two options. I prefer to, I prefer jail where you can get him some help. It ain't too much help in hell. Now, why the hell were you in Miami during Rolling Loud? Uh, I fucked up. Yeah, I done booked a motherfucking trip to go to Miami uh, for my nigga Marcus Shed birthday. Uh, so we going down there to go hang with Champ, uh, Sh Shannon Briggs, you know, just to go down there and kick it for the weekend. Uh, so we were scheduled to be there from uh, a Thursday to uh, Sunday. So when my publicist was 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 booking booking the uh, flight, we went the last minute, right? So we had been planning this for about two or three weeks. So we booked it the last minute. So the, the 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 high flight prices didn't alarm me. When we start booking for the hotel, I'm saying, well, God damn, why these prices so motherfucking high? So she said, it must be in a convention or an event down there. So we don't know what's really going on, homie. Uh, most people think I know what Rolling Loud is. I don't know what the fuck Rolling Loud was to, to this weekend. I heard about it, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's like some weed, some weed shit, right? So uh, so when I get there and 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 they say uh they having a rolling loud here, I started posting Charleston White in Miami for the rolling loud, right? Not knowing what rolling loud is. So I'm trying to get tickets to the rolling loud. Uh motherfuckers say, man, they're gonna be like four hundred dollars a piece. So uh I'm trying to get tickets. So I spend like Three or four, we spent like four hours at, at Shannon Briggs' house just chilling, uh, chopping it up, laughing. So then we shot to the hotel. So when I check in at the hotel, we immediately hit the strip. So we catch the Uber, uh, we catch the Uber down, you know, down the way, you know, to get in the mix. And so when we get in the mix, that's when I run into the Pyru dude. Uh, as I was walking down the strip, uh, you know, I got the nigga nation shirt on, so you know, I ain't I ain't hiding who I am because I, I don't know, I'm unaware of what's going on and what's happening in Miami. Uh so uh, a local guy by the name of uh, Miami Denzel, he said, Yo, Charleston White, man, we oh, I love you, man. Let me get a picture. So he take pictures on the strip. So one of his first words to me was, Yo, bro, you like our Farrakhan, man. You know, you like our MLK. So it's a it's a layer of, of guys around me when this Pyru dude approaches me. So he approaches me first with no camera, talking shit. Man, why y'all taking pictures with that bitch ass nigga? He's a bitch. He's talking about Slim 400, my people and all. So he really flexing, uh, but he just talking. And so uh, uh, my homegirl and them walk up, right? So uh, everybody's taking pictures. So I'm ignoring him. He leave and come back. He's still talking noise. Uh, I'm ignoring him. Uh, so when he, when he leave and come back this time, you hear somebody say, yeah, get him, baby. So he's in fighting distance with me. So you see me throw my guard. Nigga, what's up, bitch ass nigga? So I was trying to, I was trying to trick him to throw his guards up so I can mace him. Because I had my mace mm -hmm. on me then. So he would go be the first nigga get maced in Miami. Uh, so he didn't throw his guards up. So when he didn't throw his guards up, that's why you see me laugh. So I said, oh, man, this bitch ass nigga done tricked me, man. So now I'm feeling stupid because now I see the cameras out. But it's a layer of guys around me that's making sure. So I'm not hiding behind nobody. So my homegirl, when she see I'm ready to, she grab me because she see me pulling for the mace. She said, man, chill. No, no, we, we not for the, so she trying to stop me and calm me down. So nah, homie, it, well, well, everything that you see isn't how you see it. There's a layer of protection around me right there at that moment where nobody was going to let nothing happen to me, homie. So when he started hollering Pyru, that's what made other local Miami people start coming and getting involved because they don't really have gangs out there. So when that, when that was on camera, they didn't probably send that to you. They, they probably was trying to send it to you then. Uh, so, so we keep walking the strip. Later on that night, I end up in the club with Lil Durk. Uh, me and Rainwater, we get a section. Uh, we, in the, we in the section. These niggas got me drinking champagne, and I don't drink. 
So I'm a little tipsy. So Rainwater leave and come back and say, hey, Charleston, we might need to get out of here, nigga. A uh, little Dirk Nim in here. Unbeknownst to me, I shake the mate, tell him, nigga, I got something that can lay down 12, nigga. Well, I was just talking. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking. Mm. Uh, uh, but eventually, we end up leaving the club not being a fool. Because, you know, uh, yeah, we end up leaving. So uh, that morning, my nigga say, shit, let's go get some shoes. So we Uber down to the shoe store. I think, I, to this day, I still don't name, know the name of the shoe place. So he go in there and get some shoes. I see this little nigga that kind of look like favorite nip, but he got long, he got long uh, braids, tattooed up, you know, uh, and he's smoking some, some weed that smell good in the bitch. And he down there smoking it in the store, in the entryway of the store. So I said, say, little homie, uh, you work here? Uh, he said, nah, I'm from L.A. I said, oh, man. I, then what I say to myself, oh, shit, man, what did he say that for? He looked like a little rapping little nigga. Mm. He, uh, he was talking to another nigga getting ready to make some, make, you know, make, get him some weed. And I heard that little nigga say, nah, I got some people for to pull up. Hold on. And then mm. that little nigga disappeared. I ain't seen him no more. So... My homegirl standing right there. I'm smoking a blunt in a corner. I'm smoking a blunt in the corner. To the left of me is a wall. I can't run nowhere. To the back of me is the wall. To the right of me is the store, the street, and everything. This black sprinter van pull up. I ain't never in my life seen Soldier Boy in person. He don't look the same in person that, that he do on camera. So I see a security guard guy. Big yellow nigga, big old yellow nigga, get out the passenger seat. When the passenger door open, immediately two, three guys get out. The first nigga get out is Soldier Boy, but I don't recognize him. My homegirl do. She say, there goes Soldier Boy. She don't know what's going on between me and Soldier Boy or nothing like that. I hadn't saw any video of Soldier Boy threatening me at this point. I hadn't saw, because I would have responded to it, right? I'm the type of nigga, nigga, if I see that, I'm going to respond. I hadn't saw no video of this nigga threatening me, saying he'll have me killed or what he'll do to me. So I don't know how this go go. I just know uh, body language. Uh, I counted in my mind 17 seconds before they got to me. Uh, that's how far. So I had time to think, nigga, process. Uh, what would you do if residual income was pouring into your bank account month after month, no matter where you are?